Marie Comfort and Todd Frio confused about false conversions and false converts? Hi, I'm Bob Wilkin with Grace Evangelical Society and I have some good news for you today. Ray Comfort and Todd Frio are very famous evangelicals. Comfort's the head of the Way of the Master and Evangelistic Ministry and Frio is the head of Wretched Radio. Recently they posted a video called Meet the Real Ray Comfort and it's an hour and 25 minutes where Friel is interviewing Comfort. I'd recommend you look at the whole hour and 25 minutes. It's well worth listening to. But unfortunately, what it reveals is that Comfort and Friel do not understand the free gift of everlasting life by grace, through faith, apart from works. Instead, they believe an extreme form of Lordship salvation as we shall see. Now, I've pulled four short clips out of this hour and 25 minute video so that you can get the gist of what they're talking about. And in the first clip, we introduce the one and only time in these clips and practically the whole video where they talk about faith in Christ. So Mike, if you would play the first clip. All right. People hear about false conversions and they hear you cite statistics, 89 to 90% fall away rate, etc. And we all know false converts and we take a look at the evangelical church and you see that they're living like the world, talking like the world, watching like the world. The New Testament talks a lot about the subject of false converts. It talks about these people who believed and then fell away because it wasn't a genuine salvific faith. It was a spurious faith. And the parable that brings this to light is? The parable of the sower. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mark 4, verse 13, Jesus said, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand all parables? In other words, the parable of the sower is the key to unlock the mysteries of all the parables. Notice what we see here. According to Friel, very few people in all of Christianity are true professors. Nearly everyone is a false professor, a false convert. They've had false conversions. Now, he doesn't deny that they have faith in Christ. He says what they lack is genuine salvific faith. Well, what is genuine salvific faith? Comfort and Friel never explain what faith is, and they never explicitly explain what genuine salvific faith is. However, as you go through the rest of the video, it's clear what they believe that genuine salvific faith is. Mike, would you play clip two for us? In other words, the parable of the sower is the key to unlock the mysteries of all the parables. The wheat and the tears, true and false, the uh, good fish and the bad fish, the foolish virgins and the wise virgins, the goats and the sheep, alongside each other, true and false conversion that are going to be sorted out on the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. So it's an absolute key. Once you understand that, then not only do the parables begin to make sense, but when you read all about the carnal believers, mm -hmm. etc., and all right. these ones that, and the ones that fall away, and Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. Never genuine. He was a thorny ground hero. The cares of the world took him away because that's where his heart is. Comfort picks three parables and the judgment of the sheep and the goats at the end of Matthew 25. Why? Why doesn't he go to passages that actually talk about faith? Why doesn't he go to evangelistic passages like John chapter 3 or John chapter 4 or John 5.24 or John 6.35 to 47? Why go to passages that aren't dealing with how a person is born again or what is a true convert? 
The parables were designed to conceal truth from those who were not open. The parables are not evangelistic. None of the parables are evangelistic. In fact, there's not a single parable in the Gospel of John, the only evangelistic book in the Bible. And of course, the third parable he picks, the, the parable of the ten virgins, is about eternal rewards, not about eternal destiny. You can go to our website, faithalone.org, and see lots of articles about parables and about the judgment of the sheep and the goats. But they're way off target here. And what they're suggesting, of course, is that genuine salvific faith is that which perseveres, that which doesn't fall away, that, that which turns from their sins, commits their life to Christ, and then obeys Christ throughout one's life. Mike, if you would play clip number three. The scriptures liken the false convert to a dog going back to its vomit. Mm -hmm. to a pig going back to rolling in the mud. And the mm -hmm. reason a pig goes back to the mud isn't because it's a dirty animal, it's because it's got to cool its flesh. That's the false convert. The false convert has no knowledge of sin. Christ, they're not crucified with Christ. Therefore, their flesh demands cooling, and that's why they go back to the world where their hearts are. Mm -hmm. Well, here Comfort cites Proverbs 26.11 and alludes to 2 Peter 2.22. And I have an article on 2 Peter 2.18-22. You can see at faithalone.org. And in the article, I show that this illustration of pigs going back into the mire or dogs going back to their vomit are examples of believers who are returning to worldly ways. Believers who have grown in the faith and gone on the way of righteousness, 2 Peter 2.21, but then experience a great fall. And the issue is not their eternal destiny. The issue is they're experiencing calamity in this life. If you follow the third person plural pronouns in verses 18 to 22 of 2 Peter 2, you will see there's two different groups there. One group are the false teachers who are unregenerate according to verse 17 of 2 Peter 2. And the second group are believers whom they dupe, who they bewitch like the Judaizers of Galatians bewitch some of the believers in Galatia. And so when we get to verse 21 and verse 22, we're talking about the believers who are duped. We're not talking about the unbelieving false teachers. The issue is that if you grow in your Christian faith and mature and then fall, you're going to have a calamitous fall in this life. Mike, if you would play clip number four. Jesus said, if you put your hand to the plow and even look back, Luke 9, 62, you're not fit for the kingdom. Those that go back didn't just look back, they went back proving they were false mm -hmm. in their profession of faith. Mm -hmm. Here Comfort cites Luke 9.62. Actually the context is 9.57-62. Three different believers, yes believers, come to the Lord Jesus and indicate they want to follow him in dis as his disciples in discipleship. But they're all reserved to some degree or other in their commitment to follow him. And Jesus recognizes this and calls them to a wholehearted discipleship, a wholehearted commitment to him. And what verse 62 is saying is that if someone is plowing for the Lord, and then they look back, well then they're plowing is all over everywhere and their distractions lead them to not be effective in their service for Christ. But notice what verse 62 is talking about. It's talking about plowing for the Lord. It's talking about working. What Comfort is saying is we've got to work, work, work until the day is done in order to win our way into the kingdom. 
That's not what fit for the kingdom means. What this is talking about is being prepared for the kingdom, that is, prepared to rule and reign with Christ. At the end of Paul's life, Paul said, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me, and not to me only, but to all who have loved his appearing. In order to be fit for the kingdom, we must be looking forward to his soon return and living in light of it. So the issue is being fit to rule with Christ in the life to come, being prepared for that. It has nothing to do with getting into the kingdom and has nothing to do with work salvation. In conclusion, Comfort and Friel seem like very nice people. They seem very dedicated to the Lord. They seem like they're living godly lives. But regardless of all that, they're proclaiming a false gospel, like the gospel of the Judaizers in Galatians 1, 6 through 9. They're not proclaiming that simply by faith in Christ, a person is saved once and for all. They're not proclaiming once saved, always saved. They're proclaiming the need to struggle your whole life, your need to keep on plowing, you need to keep on following the Lord. If you fall away, well then, you're not going to make it. Ultimately, their position has no room for assurance of everlasting life because none of us can be sure that we're going to persevere to the end. None of us can be sure we're not going to fall away. But guess what? We can all be sure that we have everlasting life because the condition is simply believing on the Lord Jesus Christ for the, what he calls the gift of God, which is everlasting life. John 4, 10 through 14. When we believe in him for what he has promised, everlasting life, then we have that gift, we have everlasting life, and we continue to know we have that gift as long as we continue to believe the promise. Keep your eyes upon Jesus and His promise and His guarantee. And yes, keep on plowing for the Lord because you so long to hear Him say, well done, good and faithful servant. If you like what you heard today, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And remember, keep grace in focus.